Okay, hi everybody. This is the Trig 2 review, the Math 30-1 Trig 2 review. And this is question 1D. I'm going to solve this equation right here, except we got to consider the interval or the domain over which this equation is being defined. So we're going to go from negative 180 to 180. So a negative half rotation and a positive half rotation, just between those two. Okay, so here we go. Now, taking a quick glance at this, this question here, uh, on the plus side, I've got all my terms are either cosine or a constant. Now that's that's good, okay? If they have different trig functions, I need identities to deal with that. On the bad side, this is a two theta, whereas this is just a theta as my argument for the, the trig function here. Okay, well if those aren't the same, something's gotta go. Now, we already know that the cosine of two theta, okay, as a double angle identity, has got three different functions that it's equivalent to. So this is obviously going to be the one that's got to be manipulated here, okay? Now, or actually, I, that's not necessarily true, sorry. I, I could I could conceivably uh, change this 2 cosine theta into, um, into a cosine of, of 2 theta. I, I could do that. I don't want to, if someone saw that as an option, I don't want to downplay that. I don't want to make it sound like you couldn't do that. Yes, you could. I, I think most people, though, would look at the cosine of 2 theta, though, and I think they're they would think to do this, to make this 2 cosine squared of theta minus 1 plus 2 cosine squared of theta equals 2. I, th I think that's the more natural thing to do. Not that you couldn't. You could have split up this 2 into 1 plus 1, brought the 1 over, and actually made this 2 cosine of 2 theta there. That'd work fine. Totally fine. Now, let's group together like terms and let's set it equal to 0 because it's going to end up being quadratic. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need this equal to 0 before I can solve it. So that's 4 cosine squared of theta. I've got a minus 1 here. If I, if I bring the 2 over, uh, that'll be minus 3 is equal to 0. Okay. Well, now, I can do one of two things here. I can start to factor this. It sort of looks like a difference of squares, although that 3 isn't a, isn't a perfect square. Doesn't mean I couldn't do it. I could, I could throw down root 3s in there. But you know what? I'm a little too lazy for that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to isolate the cosine of squared of theta. And so that's going to end up becoming 3 over 4. And then I'm going to take the square root. Okay, and when I take the square root, I'm still going to get the root 3, but the denominator is going to become 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Now I like that because I recognize that from the unit circle or from my special triangles. Now, if you were to leave it like this right now, if I was to leave it like this, I should say, I would be making a very classic mistake, okay? Uh, I've seen all sorts of students do this. It's, it's not a mistake in misunderstanding trigonometry. It's a, just a little whoops with the algebra. When you take the square root, okay, to simplify this down, I don't know if the square root that I was looking for, if the, if the value that I was looking for was the positive root or the negative root. I don't know if I was looking for the principal square root or not. So I need to include the plus or minus. Now, in this context, that's actually very, very significant because, let's take a look at our domain here again, okay? Our domain has us looking in a positive half rotation and a negative half rotation. But when I have a cosine equal to plus or minus this, this ratio here, well, there are two, two quadrants where it's positive and two quadrants where it's negative. So what that means is I'm going to be looking for answers in all four quadrants here. Okay, So that plus or minus is putting us in all four quadrants. The root 3 over 2, Okay, now i got to think, Okay, where along the unit circle, where in the special triangles does the cosine ratio become root 3 over 2? And hopefully it doesn't take you too long to see that that's, ah, that's going to be 60 degrees. And by 60 degrees, I mean 30 degrees. What was that all about? Sorry, 30 degrees. Okay, so now let's just put it in the quadrants here. In the first quadrant, okay, now we'll just write it here so you can see that. In the first quadrant here, that's going to be 30 degrees. In the second quadrant, okay, I'm... 180 less 30 degrees, so it's going to be 150. Now that finishes that positive half rotation. So now I move to the negative half rotation, and 
I come out uh, to this terminal arm, that's going to be negative 30 degrees, because there's my reference angle. And then I come around here, and I'm almost at 180, but I'm less than 30, so this is going to become negative 150. So there you go. The answer to this uh, equation here is going to be plus or minus 30 degrees, plus or minus 150 degrees.